La peur le précède. La guerre le suit. Le combat est son seul salut. Pour qui vous prenez cet homme Dieu Non, Dieu aurait pitié. Lui, non. Mais ils l'ont forcé à revenir pour sauver son seul ami. Quand ils ont fait couler le premier sang. Pourquoi tu dois faire ça Parce qu'il le ferait pour moi. Rambo 3. Stallone. Mais qu'est-ce qui se passe Qui est-ce Ton pire cauchemar. C'est important, John. Je veux que tu viennes avec moi pour m'aider à diriger l'équipe. J'ai fait mon temps. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire Ça veut dire que ma guerre est terminée. Il ne fait jamais couler le premier sang. La première fois, c'était pour lui. La seconde fois, pour son pays. Montez, dépêchez-vous Cette fois, Rambo, il y a eu un problème. C'est pour son ami. Que voulez-vous qu'on fasse Qu'on envoie une équipe en Delta Plane Qu'on crée un incident international Alors j'y vais, moi. On a eu, on voit que tu n'as pas l'expérience de la guerre. J'ai vidé quelques chargeurs. Et si vous êtes capturé, nous nierons toute participation ou même toute connaissance de votre existence. J'ai l'habitude. Je sais que c'est ton ami. Mais tu ne peux pas faire ça. Vous mourrez tous les deux. Pourquoi Faites-le pour moi. Pour qui vous prenez cet homme Dieu Non, Dieu aurait pitié. Lui, non. Qui est-ce Ton pire cauchemar. Stallone. Rambo 3. Désolé de t'avoir entraîné là-dedans. Mais non. National star Sylvester Stallone returns to the screen as John Rambo in Rambo 3. Filmed across three continents with a crew of 300 and a cast of thousands, Rambo 3 is one of the largest productions ever to go before the cameras. Early openings have brought enthusiastic reviews and crowds of equally enthusiastic moviegoers. The legions of Stallone fans who nurtured the Rambo phenomenon through first blood and the blockbuster hit Rambo First Blood Part Two now have, with Rambo Three, every reason to return in vast numbers as their favorite warrior goes on a new mission, this time to the war-torn country of Afghanistan. Rambo Mania is back, and we'll return in a few moments to talk with Sylvester Stallone and to examine the exciting phenomenon of his new film, Rambo Three. The story of John Rambo began six years ago with First Blood. Stallone starred as the American veteran of the Vietnam War, who turned to his mentor, Colonel Trotman, when he had trouble with a world that wouldn't accept him. They drew First Blood, not me. Let me come in and get you the hell out of there. They drew First Blood. The 
relationship between Rambo and Troutman, played by Richard Crenna, was strengthened in Rambo First Blood Part Two as they joined forces in the fiery action film. Did we get the win this time? This time it's up to you. That will set Rambo 3 apart from the other two Rambos. Is it's much bigger, and we're trying to make this as realistic as possible. They've asked me to go in. I want you to come with me to help me lead the team. I put in my time. What's that mean? It means my war is over. Colonel Troutman is taken hostage in Afghanistan, and it's interesting because no other reason on earth could get Rambo to move to go after the one person who listened to him more than anyone else. We, we start the film in what the audience may believe is going to be a continuation of, of Rambo 2, and um, then suddenly we're transported to an entirely different environment, an entirely different background, and I think the film is going to have a look that most people are going to be very surprised with. Rambo. What happened? Soviets intercepted the team. Troutman and the rest of his party have been captured. What about me? Can you get me in? Back! in the character and he's we've grown with him we've we've learned about his his plights and his desires and his dilemmas now for the first time we see him in a whole different arena we see him uh, not going for a cause that happened in the past like the MIA situation and in first blood he was also reliving his Vietnam experiences in this one, he's forward-thinking. His uh, mentor, his father figure, is taken hostage in Afghanistan, and he breaks away from a lifestyle which is what he considers very peaceful to engage unknown enemies, hardship to try to rescue this father figure, Colonel Troutman. And in doing that, he also finds himself spiritually and... and uh, uh, you might say, futuristically, he knows where he's going from that point on for the first time in his life. In this Rambo, it's, it really is, is the turning point in the man's life. It's at a point where he thinks he has finally come to terms with what he is, that he is a, a warrior who doesn't want to be a warrior, or lo so he thinks. This mission's important, John. Do you really think we're going to make a difference? If I didn't, I wouldn't be going. It didn't before. That was another time. Come with me, John. I don't know what you think about this place, but I like it. I like being here. I like working here. I like belonging to something. You do belong to something, not this. When are you going to come full circle? What are you talking about? You said that your war is over. Maybe the one out there is, but not the one that signed you. I know the reasons you're here, John, but it doesn't work that way. You may try, but you can't get away from what you really are. And what do you think I am? A full-blooded combat soldier. Not anymore. I don't want it. That's too bad, because you're stuck with it. You're always going to be tearing away at yourself until you come to terms with what you are. Did you come full circle? The choice to do Rambo going to Afghanistan was a, a very deliberate one. We felt collectively that Rambo had spent the majority of the time we've seen him in the jungles. We've seen him uh, in more claustrophobic situations. Now he's totally out of his element. He's in a foreign land and having to deal with a whole new set of rules. Soon, catching Rambo's fancy is the Afghan horseman's favorite pastime when not fighting. Buskashi is a game with simple rules. The horseman who can carry the dead goat and deposit him in a marked circle wins. The sport is fast, often violent, and dangerous. <laughs> In this movie, 
there's no way to escape the elements of war. War is, is ever-present in Afghanistan, so Rambo is swept up in it. His objective is to get through it as quickly as possible and save his mentor's life and escape to the borders of Pakistan. But he cannot get away as, as uh, unscathed as he would hope to be. So in doing that, he learns about the cultures. He becomes involved with the Afghan warriors. And in doing so, he sees a lot of himself in there. The Afghan warrior, for example, takes an oath uh, to death. In other words, he already has commended his soul to heaven. And when he goes into battle, he considers himself dead already. So he, he fights from a, from a place that very few people can find in their souls. Rambo took that oath years before. So there's a great bonding between the two. He finally has seen people that think the way he does. Why must you do this? Because you do it for me. The character of Rambo, in each of us, there is a, a kinship to his ideals. If you look past what may seem to be the obvious, that he runs around with a machine gun, always engaged in some mortal combat. No, I think if you look, the, the real deep subliminal feel, the soul of Rambo is a good one. He, he is a man who is humble and looking to serve. He's never super confident. He never says, yes, I will accomplish. I will try. And he never asks anything in return. He gives and never receives. We'll be right back with the fascinating details of the making of the movie, Rambo 3. To recreate the battlefields of Afghanistan, Stallone took his film crew first to Israel, where three months of shooting took place on an incredible site by the Dead Sea. There, the filmmakers created the impregnable Russian fortress. We decided to shoot Rambo in the Mideast simply because it added a sense of realism, of weight to the film. I think shooting Rambo in Las Vegas would, 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 would lack a certain weightiness. You go, oh yeah, it's shot live across the street from a casino. It doesn't, uh, doesn't quite ring true. This is um, a story really about Afghanistan, so I wanted to get as close to the natural environment as I could. I think Peter McDonald took over a, a massive workload and extraordinary responsibilities in midstream. And to take up that banner showed a great deal of courage and recklessness on his part. And that kind of recklessness has uh, really been uh, transformed into what I think very exciting filmmaking. He, he is a maverick at times. He does things that are unusual. He layers his action very in such a way that it's proportioned with great depth. It isn't just, let's say, horses running across the screen. You'll see horses, tanks, horses, layers, jets. So it's very rich. It's like some people may just like to eat a thin cookie. Peter serves you up a large helping of multi-layered strawberry shortcake. Okay, it's very rich and very hard to get through, but it's well worth it at the end. In this film, I trained about 12 to 14 months on, of course, getting the body in shape and hard enough to withstand the rigors of what we went through, the desert being 130 degrees plus at times, the nights being freezing, and the stunts being <laughs> very perilous. There's been a, a lot of very near close calls and also the use of horses in this film. We were going into a primitive land where people fight Soviet tanks on horseback and it's almost um, a journey back into time so we see abandoned castles that are used as Soviet forts we see desolate barren land that seems to go on into eternity we see savage horsemen we see primitive culture fighting super technology it, it's it's a very complicated film that that I just think of it as a very broad broad canvas Desire for absolute realism led to a special attention to detail in many areas. 
technical advisors were consulted to ensure that the film's portrayal of Afghans was authentic. My help has been in many different areas, in fact. Technically, I advised them for different scenes of the movie, making sure that it looked very real and the way it is in Afghanistan. For me, looking on these things and looking at the people, you feel like you are in one of the market in Afghanistan. Can you tell me how many more men come with us? There's no rescue team, it's just me. Just you? Come on, this is no good. Well, I do not know who you really are. But by the way you look, I can see you have no experience in war. Do you? Come on, do you? I fired a few shots. <laughs> a few shots. <laughs> Come on. Maybe you should go back home and think it all over again. For a very long time. <laughs> I did think it over. With action in almost every scene, director Peter McDonald brought in veteran stunt coordinator Vic Armstrong to oversee the detailed planning. On this particular film, you've got the whole variation of stunts that you normally do on five different pictures. You do them all on one picture. We have horse work, we have aerial work with helicopters, we have a lot of explosions, which is all very dangerous. Tremendous demands were put on the helicopter pilots and their coordinators. It's a lot of teamwork with Nick Phillips, who is the air coordinator. He's excellent, and so we uh, go over each shot, walk through it, get our marks, and then go for it. The challenge is to try and make it, as I say, a realistic film, as well as an adventure story. Try and make it a more adult approach to things, and an honest approach to an, a, a situation that, that is there. Now it becomes uh, uh, a much broader canvas. Uh, the, the action sequences are very big. The action sequences is, uh, this is almost Rambo of Arabia. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very big film. is back around the world and we'll return in a moment to show you why. Sylvester Stallone and Rambo 3 burst upon more than 2,200 theater screens in North America and Canada beginning May 25th. The box office returns have mounted with explosive force, topping the $21 million mark in its first six days of release. Initial international engagements have broken industry records, signaling the return of that global phenomenon known as Rambo-mania. Mountains of special merchandise are already flooding the international marketplace, including everything from books, toys, writing paper, face masks, comic books, and t-shirts. There's even a Rambo pencil and pad set for children. Around the world, the promotions people are working overtime, creating events, everything from Rambo helicopters to Rambo hot air balloons, even a Rambo look-alike contest. My feeling was that a lot of public who go and see this film would have no idea even where Afghanistan was, talk about there had been a problem there. So what we wanted to do is let everyone know at the beginning of the film, that this is true, I and mean, this is what is happening in this world at this moment. The filmmakers received another powerful promotional boost when the Russians recently announced they were pulling out of Afghanistan. That country was again on the minds of the world, and so was Rambo. When it was time to film the movie's climactic battle, Stallone, director McDonald, and the rest of the crew moved to the American desert, to a place outside Yuma, Arizona, there, the filmmakers could control the thousands of stuntmen, tanks, helicopters, and explosions that would bring the conflict to life. Let's go this way. Let's have a few um, have tanks going and over and horses coming down. Horses and tanks, standing by. Helicopters, standing by. Effects are set. We are ready to go. Here we go now, and roll the camera!
03 has sparked a soundtrack album and what promises to be a smash hit single by Bill Medley. The road is long With many a winding turn That leads us to home Knows where Who knows where But I exciting footage and also saying we watched the character grow and we grew with it it was a mutual sharing experience that's what i'd like it to be <laughs> 